If I remember correctly, this is where he's staying. Oh? Who is it? It's me. Is the script ready? You came all the way here for that? Uh, all right. Forget that for now. Just come on out. We've got some great news. Nice try. Look, just give me some time, okay? I'm just wrapping up this last part of the script. I'll be out once I'm done. Okay, then. Looking forward to your masterpiece. Oh. So, as expected, he's missed the deadline. <sighs> the ending is one of the most important parts of the show. Even once he's done, it isn't final until we've all had the chance to read through and make sure we agree on it. Yeah, that's that's good. Someone that's healthy. Told me they'd just seen you in Poisson. I assumed it was a I case of mistaken are. identity, but sure enough, here you are, and Farina too. <sighs> I was wondering if we might run into her. So you're here for Palo? Looks like no. he could be a while, so feel free to take a stroll around town in the meantime. I've made all the arrangements already. Oh, it's okay. We can just wait here. Uh <laughs> uh, thank you for being Leave. so considerate, Miss Navia. That sounds wonderful. We'll take that stroll. Get out of here. Over here, you. How oblivious are you? <laughs> How are things in Poisson now? Any better? Things are on the mend, but it's a slow process. Some people may never recover from the trauma they experienced. I'm sorry to hear that. I wish there was something I could do. Please, must our conversations take such a depressing turn every time we meet? Let's go, we Mary Poppins, Taylor Swift. memories, <laughs> but we don't have to let them cloud everything we do. And if you're trying to make a new start, perhaps it's best if you don't bring up the past all the time. Thank you for your words of comfort. You make a very good point. I love her. But for now, <laughs> at least, I think I should stay with the way I'm feeling for a while longer. Oh okay. my gosh. These things take time. Moving on from a painful experience is easier said than done. I'm glad they didn't gloss over that. I'm happy for Farina for actually getting the, the time to act to think about her problems instead of bottling them up or being forced to move on. Which brings me to why I'm here. I thought you should probably know that not everyone here is ready to forgive and forget after the Hydro Archon's inaction in the face of catastrophe. To avoid upsetting the peace, I told the townspeople that everyone here is a member of the theater troupe, and that you are just an actress playing the role of Farina. I see. It's not a perfect solution, but hopefully it means you won't have to lie low while you're here. That's so thoughtful of you, Navia. Well, what do you expect? I am the courageous and considerate president of Spina di Rosula, after all, like my father before me. Anyway, that was all. Look after her now. Got it, Navia. Thank you. Off we go, then. Let's take a look up there. I don't have any friends that I can be frank and honest with, so maybe she's right. You're the closest thing to friends that I have. No, Villette is... No! <laughs> what? Man. Listen, listen. I'm very flattered that that's what you consider me as, but... Maybe no, Villette needs a little bit more love, you know? Just a little bit more respect of close friendshipness. Maybe she sees him like a boss or is kind of intimidated by him, but you know. Please don't hurt us. I'm so grateful that Miss Navia was so understanding. To be perfectly honest, I didn't know if I was ready to meet her. It's always easiest to just run away from your problems, but that never fixes anything. You can't get around the obstacles without facing them. So that's why you were nervous when they brought up Poisson. Yeah. yeah. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared of coming back here. Still, I felt it was something I had to do. As I was saying before, I want to see for myself the things that I never could in the past. 
I'd be overjoyed if the people here could find it in their hearts to forgive me. But they're more likely to unleash a tirade of vitriol against me. Which, of course, I completely understand and accept. I see. Oh, it's okay. I'm sure some people didn't buy an obvious lie. Yeah. Anyone that tells me that the people of Poisson should not be, you know, you know, should not be angry at Farina, I think, are in the wrong. I don't think it's easy to exactly, you know, forgive your government or your head of, um, your head authority after a disaster. It's not like they know Farina personally, so I can definitely understand these people's anger towards, you know, Farina as a symbol than a person, you know. And I'm happy that Farina is accepting that, yeah, it's just something that she's gonna have to deal with that, um, you know, she's made mistakes in the past and her mistakes have, unfortunately, heavy consequences. Yeah. I can tell people are watching me. I'm sure some people here see the idea of someone coming to Poisson dressed as the Hydra Archon as extremely disrespectful. I used to be terrified of the gaze of other people, especially when they had suspicion or resentment in their eyes. I guess I wasn't quite ready for this after all. It's okay. Nobody I'm is. I'm surprised you're making yourself go through all of this. Hmm. Maybe you've taken a, on a bit too much. I can't let myself see only the things I want to see. How would that make me any different from before? Look! There seems to be a crowd gathering over there. No, oh, they're not staying quiet either. Yeah. Probably time we made a move. How about we check out Spina de Rasula's ship? We should have a view of the whole of Poisson from there. Okay. Whither should the water flow? Damn. It's also nice to see that Genshin isn't breezing past the repercussions of her actions. I'm sorry. Or inaction. You probably whichever. just wanted a relaxing stroll. And here I am dumping all this heavy stuff on you. Oh my god, they you have animation! What? It's actually refreshing to see a different side of you. Great. Well, I appreciate your company. So please don't disappear just yet. I don't know whether you can tell, but the years of suffering and loneliness aren't the only reason I have a hard time facing up to who I used to be. As I stand here by the ship, I can't get the images of the rising water out of my mind. One after another, people were taken by the water. All those treasured lives and memories washed out of existence in an instant. They thought their god would protect them. They had absolute faith that when disaster struck, a divine power would save them from harm. And all the while, I played my part to perfection to convince them that was true. But then the floodwaters finally came, and the Hydro Archon did nothing. You shouldn't look at it like that. You are only doing your duty. Don't be so harsh on yourself. I've had to go through so many moments like that for the sake of protecting the truth. As time went on, it got harder and harder to bear. And I became more lonely and isolated. Eventually, I realized I had nothing left except the truth. I became terrified of completely failing in my task and was haunted by the thought of being left all alone, weeping on my throne. Fortunately, we were able to avoid the worst case scenario thanks to the help of heroic individuals such as yourselves. Everyone rose to their responsibilities. 
And I finally regained my freedom. But on some level, freedom also means no longer being needed. I have no further use to people. Hmm. Lima would have never imagined you'd see it that way. Think of your freedom as your reward. A reward? Because now you're finally able to speak your heart. I guess so. And back then, I didn't even dare to dream about having someone to confide in. I was scared of someone recognizing me for who I truly was, and exposing a secret I swore to protect. Believe in the Farina you see on stage. She is the one you can trust. I had to keep all my feelings, all my curiosity about life to myself. No one could be allowed to know. That's what I really meant when I said I'm no good at maintaining relationships. So that's where you were coming from. Paimon totally thought you were just a bit of a diva at heart. <sighs> Could you please get off my case? I don't know what's gotten into you today. I'm making an effort here. You could at least try to do the same. Yeah. Actually, this quest is really... This, this quest, for me, has kind of rubbed off the wrong way in terms of Paimon's responses. I don't know why. Yeah. Farina's, Farina is definitely... Arena's situation is definitely very complex. I do. I'm happy that they had this time. I once had nothing but the truth, and now I'm finally free to live my own life again. And even though I have no idea where I'm going right now, at least the choice is in my hands. All right, it's about time to head back. Polo should have finished the ending by now. Sure, okay, let's head back and check it out. Squall and Fury. Greetings. What's up? Didn't you say you needed to watch what you eat? You're supposed to be cutting down on fried foods, not wolfing down copious quantities of fish and chips, you know? Ah, uh, come on. It's not every day we get to dine at Spina di Rosula's expense. Can you believe how generous she is? I'm not about to pass on free food. <laughs> anyway, my character doesn't need to be slim and good-looking. That's your job. Are you kidding me right now? It's not your character's health I'm worried about, it's yours! I've spent my whole life battling the effects of ill health, and it kills me to watch you willingly ruin yours by filling yourself up with junk all the time. Oh no, looks like they're arguing again. We're back! Could you maybe put your differences aside for a moment? Ah, you're back. We've been enjoying Spina di Rosula's VIP treatment in your stead. <laughs> <laughs> Paulo's nearly done. We shouldn't have to wait too much longer. Great! So you were discussing your characters, right? We heard she's playing the Oceanid who turns into a human girl. What about you? Are you the lover? Oh, you're not the lover. I'm an Oceanid too. Oh. He was originally supposed to take the form of a crane, but he... <clears throat> outgrew that role. Well, the costume at least. <laughs> so now he's playing the boar instead. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the boar's not a bad character, actually. He's the one who raises the little Oceanid, yes? That's right. He has some pretty memorable lines, too. Like when he imparts some solemn words of wisdom to the little Oceanid. If you become human, you can reveal your secret to no one. You will face suffering and loneliness. Is this truly what you want? Wait, that sounds kind of familiar. It's the most important line in the whole script. I think it's a symbolic statement about our director's life and legacy. She oh. kept quiet about all the trials and tribulations she faced in running our troop, allowing us to devote ourselves fully to performing. It was only after she was gone 
that we realized how tough her job really was. You mentioned earlier that the troop is like your home. Yeah. yeah. I was born with an incurable illness, and once my family found out it couldn't be treated, they decided they didn't want me anymore. What the fuck? I spent some years taking whatever work I could find and no way. trying to manage my illness with various medicines. But whenever I had a bad flare-up, I'd be lying in an alleyway for days at a time. It was like that until the director found me one day. She told me I had a great voice and asked if I was interested in studying singing from her. Huh? I said yes. She took me under her wing, taught me to both sing and act, helped me find Mora for my meds, took care of me when my condition decided to flare up. <sighs> I know it was all a huge burden on her. She sounds like a really incredible person. Yeah. I'm, I'm so really happy was. you found someone like that. She gave everything she had to her Ooh, troop and the people right. in it. She died. All of us were so proud to Ooh. call her our director. I was a lost child too when she found me. As the child of a murderer, my parents weren't around when I was little, so I got sent to an orphanage. Ooh. The other kids were always picking fights with me. They'd say things like, Come on, you must be pretty tough if you're the son of a murderer. It was just to taunt me, though. I was an easy target, and they knew it. One day, I got beaten up so bad that I just couldn't take it anymore. So I ran away. I lost all faith in humanity by that point. Oh, no. Thought the whole world was out to get me. So hmm. sorry. Let me guess. Fortunately, ah. the next person you ran into was the director. Yeah. For the first time in my life, I was somewhere I felt safe. And I promised myself I'd stay here until the day the group parted ways. The day you hoped would never come. Ah. How times change. Oh, you're finally done? <laughs> Get your butt over here. There's someone I need to introduce you to. This is our new artistic consultant, Miss Farina. Farina? The Farina? Oh my god, how did you manage to wrangle that? <laughs> Please, the honor is all mine. I was profoundly moved to hear about your troupe and your wonderful director. I just wanted to do something to help. Same here! Hey, I'm on move, this isn't about Even you. So, this is just... Oh, wow, well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll try to calm down. Aw, yeah. he's a fan oh, oh, I'm so that... happy. Ah, yes, the script, of course. Uh, let me give you a rundown of how the story unfolds in my version of the script. I'm sure you're already familiar with the beginning of the story. A little Oceana decides she wants to become a human against the wishes of her family. She finds love and friendship in the bustling city. But then, disaster strikes. The people start to notice that all the fresh water in the surrounding area is slowly disappearing. The soil is becoming arid. Plants and flowers are withering and the people begin to panic. The little Oceanid, Cleo, and her lover decide to do something about it and investigate the truth of the matter together. In the end, they discover that all the waste and pollution created by humans over the years has caused the fresh water to flee the land as if driven by a consciousness of its own. Consciousness? You mean the water is sentient? What is happening? Water as a conscious entity. There's actually quite a few stories that explore this theme. Since the little Oceanid is a water spirit, she immediately understands how the water is feeling. She then tells her lover about her true identity, as well as the truth behind the crisis. Her oh. lover accepts her for who she is, and works with her to find a way to bring the water back. However, unbeknownst to them, there were some people eavesdropping when she revealed her secret. The little Oceanid is accused of being directly responsible for driving the water away and faces the greatest dilemma of her life. And then? In the end, she makes the brave decision to sacrifice herself to save her lover and the rest of humanity. Huh? But didn't they all treat Cleo like a villain? Why would she want to save them after that? Well, yeah. she mainly wanted to save her lover, plus everyone who'd stood up for her. 
through her love for her human partner, she was able to find an even greater love, one that extended to all of humanity. Surely the biggest strength of Cleo's character. There's actually something else that bothers me. You know the protagonist is supposed to represent the director, right? And she never had the chance to become a hero in our world. If we're serious about dedicating this show to her memory, we should make the ending as true to life as possible. <sighs> what about if... What the, the hell? Oceanid is hounded to death by people who hate her, her lover makes sure her secret never gets out, and humanity continues down the path to extinction. That's a little that morbid. like too cruel of an ending to me. And perhaps a little irresponsible to yeah, present to the audience. Yeah, <laughs> oh my god. That ending would be a perfect mirror to director Aureli's death. Both arbitrary and meaningless. Oh, don't say it like that. On the day when she went missing, director Aureli had instructed us all, somewhat out of the blue, to leave the court of Fontaine and wait for her outside the city. We waited and waited at the rendezvous point, but she never came. By the time we returned to the city, she disappeared without a trace. Oh. We looked for her. The Gardamex looked for her, but she was nowhere to be found. Increasingly, all the signs seemed to point to her being the latest victim in the serial disappearances case. The director was the kindest soul in the world. Yet she was senselessly sacrificed for the sake of a so-called experiment by someone who had nothing to do with her at all. Hmm. But doesn't the way she suddenly told you to leave the city suggest that maybe she had some sense of what was about to happen? It almost seems as if she was moving you to safety. I've been trying to follow up on that ever since, but all my efforts so far have turned up nothing. Vilmal might know something, but he won't open up to me. Vilmal? The one who's playing the role of the villain? Yeah. He's been overwhelmed by grief. I think the director's death hit him hardest of all. Grief? <laughs> Guilt, more like. Also, I... have a hard time imagining that anyone took it harder than me. Because... Well, oh. speaking of the play being true <laughs> oh, to no. life, I, I was deeply, madly in love with O'Reilly. What? You... you kept that one quiet. Ooh. It's time to be upfront with you all. No more keeping secrets from each other. We'll never be able to agree on the ending if we can't be honest about how we feel. I did tell her how I felt once, but she turned me down pretty much straight away. She said that we were all like brothers and sisters to her, and Aww. she never considered us as potential brothers romantic owned. partners. Not that it came as a shock or anything. It was what I was expecting to hear. So I told her I'd always be there for the troop, and I'd always be there for her. Oh. I said, maybe one day in the future, when everyone's settled into their own lives and on the up and up, and managing the troop no longer required her constant attention, well... Maybe then she could reconsider what she really wanted in her life. And now, that day will never come. Oh, Paulo. So if I'm the one writing this ending, then I'm going to make sure it does right by O'Reilly. I won't let anyone get in the way of that. In that case, you have to straighten things out with Vilmont once and for all, face to face. Yeah. We've all had our differences Come on. of opinion over Let's the end. Beat him up. But those two have never seen eye to eye on anything. One of them has to compromise if we're ever going to reach a final decision. Well, if that's where we're at, looks like it's time to go visit Vilmo. Are you ready to face the truth? Honestly, I'm slightly terrified. But for the sake of our final performance, I'll do whatever it takes. Funny you should ask, though. You really do get what I'm going through right now. I certainly do. Come on, everyone. Allons-y! Wither should the water flow. This is the final one? Is this... is this the last one? Let us see our quests. Yes, this is the final one. It's time! To beat up this mysterious person. 
Ugh, as if this journey wasn't tough enough already without a roadblock. Don't worry, we should all be fine with the traveler here. We don't need to take a detour. <laughs> Went to slums. Uh, uh wait, w w why are you all looking at me? You're not seriously expecting me to fight, are you? We're just curious, that's all. I don't think anyone's ever seen Farina in a fight before. As he shouldn't. Yeah, but don't you remember why? The Hydro Archon willingly gave up all her power so it could be converted into Indemnidium. <laughs> Miss Farina said so herself. Precisely! <laughs> and I'm not even the Hydro Archon anymore, so all my power is gone anyway. <laughs> um... Oh. As much as it pains me, unfortunately, I should just admit, <laughs> I'm more like a uh, damsel in distress more than anything. That sounded so smug. Ugh, secondhand embarrassment is unbearable. <laughs> so lovely. This doesn't require god level powers, don't you know any self defense? So lovely, indeed. Alas. I am forced to watch on helplessly as a more <laughs> brave and seasoned adventurer than I swoops in to save the day. Aww, too bad. I was so pumped to feast my eyes on fight mode for Rena. Sorry to leave all the heavy lifting to you. No worry, piece of cake. Beat him up, boys. Vilma, are you there? Get him, boys. Oh. oh, it's you guys. Wait, what's Lady Farina doing here? Oh, we're just chillin'. What's up? I can explain. We've been rounding up the whole troop. We now have everyone except you. Delphi explains a whole sequence of events so far to Vilma. So, you think knowing Ow. the truth about the director's disappearance will help you write an ending to the script that pleases everyone? Yeah. Why? I care just as much as everyone else about making the Little Oceanid a success. That's why I wanted to wait until after the show. Oh. If I open this can of worms now, I, I just don't want to make things difficult between us. We're supposed to be a unit when we're on stage. The Amal, avoiding the truth will not help anyone. Unless you mean to suggest that O'Reilly's death had something to do with you. I don't want to talk about it. Listen, Vimal. I used to think that my love for O'Reilly was a point of shame. I never brought it up to anyone, but now they're saying some I've made up my mind right to put it boys. all on the table. I'm prepared to face everything, to sacrifice everything for the sake of the show. The little Oceanid cannot be complete unless we do justice to Aureli on an emotional level. <sighs> this is why people think of you as not being the smart one. <laughs> Damn. As you all know already, the troop was kept afloat not from ticket sales, but oh, donations no. from the audience. Of course, that was nowhere near enough. What did you do? We took on side jobs when we weren't performing, but even then, the troop's financial situation was pretty dire. So, anyway, one day after a show, a merchant came to me and offered us a huge sponsorship. In return, we just had to provide the audience with their drinks during performances. Oh, Jesus. It seemed like a win-win. So, I said yes to it on the spot without consulting the director. It was only when the merchant came to deliver the goods that I realized the drink in question was synth. Isn't that the drink paddled by the culprit behind the serial disappearances case? I remember that it induces a state of euphoria. Uh, I, I freaked out when I saw the boxes. And I told the director everything right away. She was completely shocked as well. But she didn't reprimand me for making the decision without consulting her. Instead, she contacted the merchant and stated that the troupe could not agree to this collaboration. The merchant was furious, berated us for going back on our word, and threatened to sue us for damages. The amount was astronomical. There was no way we'd be able to pay. <laughs> And then I was going to sort it on my own, but the director stopped me. She said that this was an issue for the whole troop and it wasn't my fault. But things only got worse from there. The synth merchant just wouldn't let up. And suddenly the director told us all to leave the city one day. What the? 
I knew then that things must have reached a boiling point. I admit this whole thing was my mistake. I didn't dare to tell any of you the truth back then, and after the director disappeared, I was even more afraid to say anything. Oh. You brought the director to the attention of the synth dealers. Your mistake gave them a motive to kidnap and murder her. Yeah, I got Aureli killed. There, I said it. Happy now? Oh. Hey, don't say that. You traitor! You knew Aureli was in danger. Why in God's name didn't you tell us? What do you mean you were afraid? This was a life and death situation. We could have saved her. How could you be so stupid? Please, try not to get too worked up. Yeah, listen to him. You need to stay calm. Stay calm? How can I stay calm? This guy got all really murdered. She was the love of my life. And he has the gall to try and high-road us, claiming that he kept his mouth shut for the sake of the show. How about taking some responsibility for what he's done? All I can say is I'm sorry. Truly. I wanted to apologize to everyone in the troupe, but that won't bring back the director. What good is my apology now? I'm just a coward who made an awful, terrible mistake that I can never take back. Beat me up if you want. Kill me if you prefer. It's what I deserve. End my life. So I can meet the director and apologize to her in person. Oh. Get out of my sight. Go, get lost. I don't ever want to see your face again. That's enough. You've screamed and shouted at each other for long enough. Now pipe down, both of you! Can you stop conflating the show on stage with your real-life relationships in the troupe? You keep saying that you want to use this final performance to pay tribute to your director and celebrate her life. How can you do that if you're just using it as an excuse to vent your own emotions? <sighs> you're right. But... I'm sorry. <sighs> on stage. The lead role is the focal point of the audience's attention. And you're all used to seeing the director as the heart of the troupe. But in her own life, her greatest desire wasn't to be the center of attention. I can tell how much she loved you all, and how much she loved the troupe. What she wanted was to build a warm home for all of her brothers and sisters. To shield you all from the storms that rage in the world outside. That's how you should remember her, and that's what you should be celebrating. I understand why you're trying to make her the hero of the story, but isn't she your hero already? After everything she did for you? Yeah. So think hard about what that means, and then think again about what you hope to achieve by arguing with each other. If you really hate each other, and can't reconcile your differences, then you could just call it quits now. Why bother with the final performance if the group is already fractured? But you can't bring yourself to do that, can you? You care too much about Director O'Reilly and the home she built you all to let go. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I don't see what's so funny. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean it that way. It's just that... For a moment there, it, it felt like our director was back with us again. If Aww. she'd seen Paolo and Vilmont at each other's throats like that, she would have scolded them exactly like you did, in that same stern voice. Really? But she sounded like such a gentle person. Of course she was. Even her harshest lectures came from a place of kindness, and it showed. She really was a truly outstanding person. I... What you said, it really puts everything into perspective. I'm truly sorry. I really meant for this to be a genuine apology, but I ended up making it all about me and my self-pity. It's all right. Let's save all this for after the performance. So, the ending, what are we going to do about it? Clearly, everyone needs to take a step back for now and reflect on what really matters. 
When emotions are running high, things get lost in the fray. The end of the story needs to focus back on O'Reilly herself. She's the true star of the show. It actually might be possible to find out more about her feet. What do you mean? The Traveler is right. You once investigated that underwater synth base and recovered items belonging to the victims. If you could find anything that O'Reilly left behind, uh, perhaps we can get a better sense of what she went through in her final days. You really think that's possible? I trust that nobody would object to the ending of the story being based on O'Reilly's true feelings? No. Well, we'll leave this in your capable hands. Come, let's pay a visit to the Palais Mermonia. The rest of you, head back to the rehearsal location for now, and wait for our good news. Aww. I like Farina. Farina's very complex, but she is definitely... She's definitely someone that you can trust. And someone that you should, you know... Too slow. Someone that you should appreciate. I can definitely see now why she's, you know... Very much a crowd favorite. I, I, I like her. 